Registered Phenomena Code 985 Object Class Gamma Red Hazard Types Regenerative Hazard Transmutation Hazard Ballistic Hazard Aggression Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-985-1, currently Senior Researcher Dr. Lewis, is to be no further than 30 meters away from RPC-985 for longer than 24 hours. As long as this distance can be reasonably maintained, no additional containment procedures are required, and RPC-985 can be located wherever Dr. Lewis works at Site-065. Dr. Lewis is to be placed under special security and medical care to avoid the possible transference of RPC-985-1 status. In the event that Dr. Lewis cannot maintain a close proximity with RPC-985, he is to be euthanized by a CSD-class personnel, and the aforementioned CSD-class, now an instance of RPC-985-1, must immediately maintain a 30-meter distance with RPC-985. RPC-985 is a potted plant with large flat leaves and multiple tall, thin stalks. The pot is abnormally dense, weighing approximately 70 kg. Additionally, a faint beat can be detected from the pot when held. X-rays of the interior have proven inconclusive with varying results. Digging into the dirt merely results in the tool being used to dig hitting an unbreakable surface. RPC-985 has a worn label on the bottom of the pot, identifying itself as coming from a Sam's Flower Garden botany industry. The label claims that the anomaly will be your new best friend, and you'll never want to leave him alone. All authority attempts to trace any business potentially related to a Sam's Flower Garden, anomalous botany, or plant sales in the area have failed. RPC-985's primary anomalous effect is activated when a person it is bonded to RPC-985-1 is not within a 30-meter diameter of the entity for longer than 24 hours. The bonding process is not entirely understood, but it is known that upon the death of RPC-985-1, the person closest to RPC-985-1 will instead become RPC-985-1 and the original bonded person will cease their anomalous effects. Should this criteria be achieved, RPC-985 will mutate in order to reduce its distance between itself and RPC-985-1. This can range from harmless mutations, such as the stalks becoming long enough to grow around the pot and act as legs to transport the plant, to more aggressive ones, such as the plant mutating to violently destroy anything surrounding it if RPC-985 is several hundred meters away. Upon reaching RPC-985-1, RPC-985 will revert back to its standard form and become inert. RPC-985 was discovered in the process of attempting to reach Dr. Carroll, a previous instance of RPC-985-1. A detailed log of its discovery and capture have been displayed below with Psy representing the apparent activation of RPC-985's anomalous effects. Discovery Log February 5, 2019 Minus 30 hours A report of a bizarre potted plant being left on the doorstep of Dr. Carroll was filed to the police. Minus 22 hours Interviewed neighbors claim having seen Dr. Carroll attempt to dispose of RPC-985, only to fail and give up. RPC-985 was left by Dr. Carroll's trash in her backyard. Minus two hours. Dr. Carroll leaves her house and drives to the Miami airport. Minus one hour. Dr. Carroll boards her plane to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. She has purchased the front seats on the first class of her plane. RPC-985 activates. Reports between witnesses vary, but it appears to have resembled a large tree at this stage moving via pulling itself with its branches. Plus two minutes. RPC-985 reaches Florida State Road 997. The Authority becomes aware of RPC-985 due to Dr. Lewis being in the general area. Class D amnestics are prepared for deployment. Plus six minutes. 
The board approves armed measures to attempt subduction of RPC-985. Plus 10 minutes. RPC-985 reaches the Atlantic Ocean. All authority attempts to slow down RPC-985 have failed. By this stage, RPC-985 resembles a large, vaguely humanoid mass of vines, approximately 50 meters tall. Plus 15 minutes. In an effort to quicken amnesty deployment, a false tornado alert is broadcast across Miami radio waves and televisions to encourage civilians to stay indoors. Plus two hours. Amnestics are successfully deployed in Miami. Authority efforts are directed towards the Caribbean area. Plus 2.6 hours. The Authority's investigation into the potential origins of RPC-985 is concluded, and successfully identify the location of its potential target. Plus 3.2 hours. The Board approves, via a close margin, a procedure to shoot down the plane carrying RPC-985-1. Plus 4 hours. The plane RPC-985-1 occupied was shot down near the Venezuelan coast. Due to this causing the death of Dr. Carroll, this unknowingly transferred the status of RPC-985-1 to Jonathan Morgan, the gunner aboard one of the Authority helicopters. Plus 4.1 hours. RPC-985 approached the Authority convoy. Upon coming within 300 meters of RPC-985-1's aircraft, RPC-985 shifted into its base form and flung itself at a currently unknown speed into the aircraft. All personnel aboard were killed. RPC-985 landed in the ocean below after this attack, as did the plane surrounding the entity. An Authority submarine managed to successfully recover RPC-985. The object appeared to be mostly undamaged, except for a small crack on one of its leaves. Due to RPC-985 killing RPC-985-1, and therefore eliminating the possibility of a target, it appeared to have removed its major anomalous property and was classified as neutralized. Plus one day. RPC-985 successfully relocated to and contained in Site-065. Object placed in a 3x2x3m room for temporary storage. Plus three days. Senior researcher Dr. Lewis made direct physical contact with RPC-985 in order to test for anomalous properties about the pot itself. This is believed to have accidentally targeted him with RPC-985-1 and restarted the anomalous effects. Containment procedures were updated, and the object was reclassified as Gamma Red. Following the anomaly's recovery, a cover story about an ongoing storm in the southern areas of the Caribbean was released in order to explain the disappearance of Dr. Carroll, as well as the passenger plane she was flying on.